Chris Cook, well, the founder of Kids Company, Camilla Batman-Gelage, is with me now. Uh, good evening. First of all, evening. let's deal with the specific allegations one by one in uh, Chris Cook's film. First, uh, that skunk was smoked, used uh, on your premises. What do you say to that? Young people are absolutely not allowed to smoke any drugs or use any type of drugs on our premises. And if we find that out, we challenge them. So on our premises, we would not allow that at all. And in fact, we have a policy of getting young people yeah. off drugs. Yes, but so in, the, in, the, in that process, were you ever aware of either clients, young people or staff smoking skunk on your premises? No. Uh, I mean, you know, you know, they try it. It's young people. They try it in a secondary school. We tell them off. We tell them they have to leave. They're not allowed to smoke it. We're not pretending to work with disturbed young people. We are working with disturbed but young not people. not on the premises. They're never, not, never. They're not allowed to use any form of drugs on the right. premises. Let's move on to a specific incident um, where a member of staff was hit by a snooker ball launched by one of your clients at your premises, and that member of staff was hospi uh, hospitalized. Do you remember that incident? I do remember mm -hmm. hearing about that incident, actually. And it wasn't that I ever said you shouldn't press charges. I never would say that. Our policy is if staff wish to press charges, they can do that. But again, we work with very disturbed kids. They hurl chairs, they hurl snooker balls. In, uh, in this incident, though, yes. a member of your staff, yes. uh, under your care as well, was hospitalised. Well, I, I'm not sure whether they were hospitalised. Well, apparently they, they were. were. No, I'm not aware of them being hospitalised. Mm -hmm. I am aware of a member of staff being hit by a snooker ball and having to check it and that staff, met, but this is what happens but, uh, sometimes it, it, to us. It, snooker balls are, are very dangerous yes, objects. Yes, they did are. That, did that staff member want to press charges? No, no. You as, know that? As far as I'm aware, uh, they never came to me suggesting that they wanted to press charges. I wasn't, the staff member didn't even come to me. But you as a say, leader of the charity presumably would be very concerned when there were violent incidents of that nature. Yes, and they, they happen uh, on, on our premises because uh, there can be situations where young people lose it and we deal but with that, that situation. Particular, that particular client who launched that snooker ball yes. is now in prison for murder. Do you regret that that incident was not taken more seriously, reported to you properly, and then you could have reported it to the authorities? Well, to be frank, it, it, it all depends on what happens. You know, not every violent outburst is the same. And of course, we take every mm. violent incident seriously and we deal with it. I don't know what the exact situation was that er arose that the snooker ball was launched. The staff member never came to see me about whether it. Whether they were in hospital. And we were, no, no. I don't know whether they were in hospital. Mm. I think they sought... Uh, advice about the repercussions of right. it but uh, it, it was never brought to my attention that this was something that the staff member wanted right. to press charge well, let's about. move on now to a very 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 serious allegation of sexual assault um, how do you respond to the allegation that your staff knew that an older male client was sexually assaulting young female clients and did nothing about it you know in fact this allegation mm. has brought, been brought to us for the first time by the police recently and I can't go into any details about it but from mm -hmm. what we've looked at ourselves this was never brought to our attention but it was reported way. it was reported by the clients the young female clients who were subject to the sexual abuse by your older clients say that they reported it to staff, but it went, it was not recorded and it was not passed on to the authorities. But presumably, you're not, you're not um, questioning the, the, the possibility that, that young women were perhaps abused by this client on your premises. That is a very disturbing possibility. I, I have, none of my staff have any awareness of an incident taking place on our premises. But we know if of two you, people who work for you 
who received complaints from young people under 18 about sexual exploitation by other clients. They passed that information on, they claim, inside the organisation, but it never reached the authorities. Do you know, that is such a serious concern and it allegation. Is. And if such a thing had taken place on our premises, it would have triggered all our safeguarding procedures. It would have been immediately reported. And hand on my heart, I can tell you that I have absolutely no awareness of it. And there is no awareness of this incident having taken place at kids' companies' premises or being brought to kids' companies' attention. We would have totally reported but now, something but like that. But now that it has, and, 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 and we uh, showed the um, allegations that we had to a child uh, protection expert who then suggested it was put onto the police, now that it has been brought to your attention, presumably you're very pleased that there is a police investigation. Absolutely, and we are cooperating with the police 100% because we wouldn't mm -hmm. want something like this to have happened and gone unchallenged. Uh, you know, we are an agency that is about the protection of children. To date, if we've had any child protection concerns, we've actually brought them to the attention of the authorities and it's gone through due process. Uh, you know, but, but the culture, I think, would, and you would agree with this, that very much in kids' company, you wanted to, you were dealing with a lot of vulnerable uh, young people, you wanted to keep within, you didn't want things to be reported to the police, you wanted to deal with it yourself. It is perfectly possible that then there wasn't a culture growing up where people were encouraged to report things when they went wrong. No, Kirsty, that's not true. I draw the line mm. at sexual abuse. You know, it's one thing kids losing it uh, because they're having a tantrum or they're having a distressing day and they hurl chairs and we deal with all that sort of stuff. But sexual abuse is very, very serious. And, and if it was brought to our attention, we would have absolutely dealt but with I'm, it very robustly. But I'm also These wondering... are allegations. Yeah, of course they are. And, you know, it's very interesting. I, I want to talk to you about this because actually these allegations led to the downfall of Kids Company and funding being withdrawn. I would argue that I, I, it was very irresponsible to release them in this way. This is the first time that I've had a chance to actually see what Newsnight has got. But we gave I you, wasn't able to see any no, of this gave, stuff. Just, just, to be, just to be absolutely clear, because I think it is important to be clear, uh, that these allegations, these specific allegations, uh, were given to you at Kids Company a week ago for right to reply. So you've had the allegations. You haven't actually physically seen the film, but you've had the allegations. And this point about the police investigation leading to the downfall of Kids Company, uh, that, of course, isn't true because it's nothing to do with these sexual allegations that Kids Company has closed its doors. It's to do with financial mismanagement. We have found this out, but that is not what... No, you're wrong about that because actually we had a fantastic deal on the table with the government putting money in, with the philanthropists putting money in. The minute the government money hit our account, mm. suddenly, out of the blue, came these allegations of sexual abuse about which we knew nothing. And within hour or so, it was all over the news. Mm -hmm. And we still didn't know what these allegations mm -hmm. were at that point. But then consequently, what happened is a charity that is responsible for the welfare and protection of children overnight turned into a charity that was sexually exploiting children on the back of absolute rumours. Nothing right. has been brought to our attention. And you will see that after this police investigation, it will become clear that we did not withhold any information but or fail to report. But you would, you would, as somebody who has campaigned against any child exploitation or whatever and child protection, you have just told me that you welcome the police investigation. Absolutely. And, and that, that is the most uh, important thing, surely. But it was done in an irresponsible but, way. But it was done in Newsnight a way that... Newsnight had this information yes. for quite a while. And I would argue, if you took all this time to make this sort of film, why wasn't this immediately brought to the attention of the charity so that we could discuss it with the police? Well, what happened was that uh, what the, the serious nature of the allegations were passed on and then finally passed on to the police. And the police asked us, because obviously involved kids' company, to deal with it first. But we gave you a week 
to respond to the allegations. And tonight you've come on to respond to them, and, and we appreciate that. Let's turn now to the, why the charity absolutely collapsed. Um, did you have a problem managing a £24 million budget? No, we didn't have a problem managing a £24 million budget. In fact, these allegations of mismanagement mm. are absolutely untrue. Let's speak facts, mm. okay? For 19 years, we passed financial audits without any trouble. Absolutely. We've had two, hold on, we've had two additional independent audits without any trouble. We have had quarterly reports submitted to government both financial and clinical, without any trouble. We just didn't have enough funding. But you make, you make the audit and you're solvent at the time when the audit takes place. But I want to talk to you about the actual management of the company. Let's take one specific example that was on Radio 4 tonight. JP Morgan gave 30,000 a year for a financial literacy worker. As you know, restricted funding means it has to be used for the financial literacy worker. So it was 90,000 over three years. For two of those three years, there was no financial literacy worker. The money wasn't returned and you don't know how the money was used. That is not true. JP Morgan gave us three grants, in fact, mm -hmm. and one of those was split between three workers. Mm -hmm. One of them was for one worker mm, financial and literacy one, worker. no, no uh, the legit, uh, mm -hmm. which is driving lessons. Mm -hmm. And the third one was for a financial literacy worker yes. over three years. Yes. And that was occupied by a staff member for all those three years. So As a financial fact, literacy officer. Yes. And the, in fact, they were, he did that alongside other work that he did which is getting young people into university. And I went through this with the radio program, making it quite clear that their information was incorrect. It was never one grant, it was actually three grants. You've clarified that. Let's now talk about why you, as responsible leader of a very big company which employs 600 people, did not have reserves. So that when what happened, happened, You've had 600 staff now who've got presumably no chance of redundancy because the company collapsed. Surely it was irresponsible for you and the trustees not to make sure that you had sufficient reserves to deal with problem times. I completely agree with you. And that is precisely why we went to central government to try and get a more robust grant. Because our problem but is... But surely you no, should let cut me your finish. cloth. Hang on. No, 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 hang no, 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 no. Surely you should... No, for no, the time, hang on, for the time you, you have, did not you have reserves. You asked me to come on the program uh, to explain sure. something. Give me the time to explain, yep. okay? The difficulty Kids Company has is that children and young people are self-referring off the street. And we are getting too many with too serious levels of problems so mm. we're getting psychotic kids we're getting children and young people who are sexually and physically abused that local authorities aren't taking so consequently what's happened is when these children come to the premises nobody pays for them so in 19 years we haven't had one pence of local authority funding or mental health funding, and yet I've had to employ psychiatrists and psychiatric nurses to deal with them. What I went happen? to government. Well, hang on. I just want, we've only got time no, for one no, more let me question. No, Will you ask kids' question, company you let rise me out of the ashes? Will you either start a new charity or bring kids' company back to life? That's what I have to ask. All that matters is that the children who've been denied care now and who saw kids' company as a family are properly supported. And that's why we turned to government for extra funding, because we knew that we needed more finances to deal with the challenges that were arriving at our door, including building up reserves. Camilla Gatman, thank you very much for joining thank us. You.